and I will assure you that my first lecture will be uh, very brief. So, Avery, I know I promised you a video response to your question like three weeks ago, and you still don't have one, so my apologies for being long overdue. Uh, so let's get right to it. Number one, what does the future of space travel look like? Well, the future of space travel looks incredible, considering that it's been 48 years since uh, we last landed on the moon and actually sent humans off our own planet to another. So on the scale of progression, you have early Apollo lander type technology, Saturn V's massive rockets with incredible amounts of fuel. In fact, that's pretty much all we were launching was fuel because we just didn't have advanced enough rocket technology to just make it an easy flight to the moon. Um, and then land and turn around and come back. So you have this little, small, little capsule and this massive, to date, one of the largest rockets ever produced by mankind to get us there. It's 48 years ago. Remember, NASA did all this with basic slide rule and, you know, hand calculations. Okay, we've come a long way. So next step, space shuttle. NASA, late 80s, early 90s, space shuttle gets us into low Earth orbit. We have that to thank for getting awesome stuff into orbits, such as the Hubble Space Telescope, uh, various GPS satellites. We have that to thank for our GPS system we have today. Uh, the International Space Station, which has been going for all this amount of time, thanks to the efforts of the space shuttle and the Russian Soyuz capsules to build this incredible base of operations in low Earth orbit. So that's where we came from. But you asked what the future of space travel looks like, not the past. And let me tell you, the future is Awesome. We are headed to Mars, obviously, because that's the only other planet in the solar system, our solar system at the moment, that we believe is capable of supporting humanity for a long haul. So everything that we're building going forward for space travel is centered around that global idea. Um, that includes NASA's space launch system with its Orion capsule, which is basically a modern reinterpretation of the Apollo missions. Uh, how do you get a crew, its equipment, uh, enough to support a camp of some kind on the surface? all the way across uh, to our neighbor over in Mars and set up there. So you've got NASA's Space Launch System with Orion. You've got SpaceX's Interplanetary Launch System uh, that they're working on with their Red Dragon capsules. Lockheed Martin is working on their base camp idea, which is very similar to the systems uh, shown in the movie The Martian, the Hermes uh, orbiting vehicle that you see there that they used to get Mark Watney off the surface of Mars is actually inspired by a current Lockheed Martin plan called Base Camp. Uh, very cool technology, outstanding ideas, um, and there's various other little individual groups out there that are also working on their own future plans. The European Space Agency, the Chinese Space Agency, I believe the Russians also have a plan in the works. Everybody's kind of setting their sights on getting to Mars somewhere in the 2020, 2030 uh, time bracket is about what seems to be the norm. But needless to say, we are hard charging towards Mars with all speed, urgency, and with as much money and manpower as can possibly be thrown behind it. I don't know if we if you and I will ever see the day where we have a thriving Mars colony, but I would wager good money that our children will live to see that day. And that honestly is what inspires me to be so involved in the space travel, space exploration uh, world at the moment, because that's that's honestly where humanity is going and where our future lies, I would, I would say. Number two, do we need to continue touring space and why? Well, I think the answer to that question is best summed up in the words of our favorite writer, Aaron Sorkin. There are a lot of hungry people in the world, Mel, and none of them are hungry because we went to the moon. None of them are colder and certainly none of them are dumber because we went to the moon. And we went to the moon. Do we really have to go to Mars? Yes. Why? Because it's next. Because we came out of the cave and we looked over the hill and we saw fire and we crossed the ocean and we pioneered the West, and we took to the sky. The history of man is hung on the timeline of exploration, and this is what's next. I know. And that pretty much sums it up. Since our creation, mankind has been constantly rolling back the fog of the unknown to explore that which we don't know, to fill in the blank edges of the map, and in the words of Gene Roddenberry, creator of Star Trek, to boldly go where no man has gone before. And for us at the moment, that is Mars. That is deep space. Uh, that is truly what is next for us. Avery, have a Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. We'll catch you later.